This conference will now be recorded. We'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Commissioner Inger? Here. Commissioner Jennings? Here. Commissioner Rogers? Here. Commissioner Warren? Here. Mayor Schultz? Here. Presley. Presley? Presley. I think she's in the back. We can all rise for prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on up here, Presley. Yes. Just, just a moment. I'll do the prayer and then you'll do the pledge, all right? Okay. All right. Let's bow our heads. Father, grant us the wisdom and the courage to know and do what is right, good and true. May we speak out when it is time to speak and listen patiently and respectfully when it is time to listen. May we always be guided by the spirit of community, justice, and love. And may we always pray not only for our city, but our county, our state, and our nation. We ask for protection for our first responders as they perform their duties and guidance for the city employees to keep our city running smoothly for our citizens. We ask this in the name above all names. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, Presley. I got something for you. We have something for you, I should say. We're to be loud, too. Uh, so thank you. Uh, additions or deletions? No matter, there is not. I'm making a motion we approve the agenda as written. Second. It's been moved and approved. Moved and seconded that we approve the agenda as written. Is there any discussion? If not, I'll say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Proclamations. Do, do you want to do the outstanding student first? Yes. yes. So I don't, is Cameron here? I, don't see. I see Cameron and um, Macy here. I don't know if Haley's. Hey, Haley's here. She's back there. Yep, they're all here. Is, is, is Tammy Anderson? I don't know if Tammy is. Committee, uh, is Tammy here? Anderson? Yeah. Yeah, seen that. that makes you the chair pro <laughs> <laughs> Mayor has got it. of the Outstanding Student. Um, the Outstanding Student Award Program started in 1984. The City Commission implemented this program to recognize students for outstanding examples in academic ex civic excellence in our community. Each year, staff and te teachers, staff and administrators at the Arc City Christian Academy, Arc City Middle School, and Arc City High School, and Arc Kelly County Community College uh, nominate students who they think are qualified to honor. 
Um, each year, Outstanding Student Award Committee appointed by the Mayor, the City Commission, receives all nominations from three schools. Short, informal interviews are conducted. Each nominee and the committee then chooses three finalists from each school to represent the nominees. From all nine finalists, a top student is chosen from each school. Of the top three students, one is chosen for overall city of our Kansas City Outstanding Student of the Year, and they will be awarded a $1,000 scholarship. The first runner-up receives a $500 scholarship, and the second runner-up receives a $250 scholarship from the city of our Kansas City. And so this year's second runner-up is... Haley McCorbery. McCorbery. And then the first runner up is Macy Wolfenberger. Congrats, ladies. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. 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 I'm thankful for this opportunity, and I'm going to use this scholarship towards my education and career. So I'm very thankful for that. That's awesome. Yeah, Great. thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Congrats, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Satterly. Bless you. Come in and face the crowd. Face the crowd. Turn around. There you go. Whereas the, the National Day of Prayer is a tradition proclaimed by the Continental Congress in, in 1775, whereas the United States Congress, by joint resolution on April 1952, provided that the President shall set aside and proclaim a suitable day each year other than a Sunday as National Day of Prayer on which the people of the United States may turn to God in prayer and meditation. And whereas in 1988, legislation setting aside setting aside the first Thursday of May in each year as a National Day of Prayer was passed unanimously by both houses of the United States Congress and signed by President Ronald Reagan. Reagan. And where the National Day of Prayer is an opportunity for all Americans to join the United Prayer to acknowledge our dependence on God, give thanks for blessings received, request healing for wounds endured, and ask God to guide our leaders and bring wholeness to the United States and its citizens. And we're asked it is fitting and proper to give thanks to God by observing a day of prayer in the United in the Art, Art City of the City of Art Kansas City Kansas and when all may acknowledge our blessings and express gratitude for them while we recognize our dependence on God's continued blessings and guidance now, therefore, the mayor of Art City, uh, 
city of Arkansas City, Kansas, does hereby proclaim Thursday, May 4th, 2023, as a day of prayer in Arkansas City, and encourage all city of sins of Arkansas City to observe this day in ways uh, appreciate to with its important and significant and recognize this year's theme. Pray fervently and righteous and avail much from Bible verse James five sixteen B. Warren's coming to see you. Good job. <clears throat> a lot of words, wouldn't it? Thank you so much. You did a good job. <clears throat> Grant. Come on up, Grant. Whereas, um, whereas music plays an increasingly important role in our world today, and whereas music is one of the most sublime of human pursuits and is subscri subscribed to be all races and creeds, and whereas music is the language of all people and is one of the greatest forces in creating peace and harmony. And whereas the National Federation of Music Clubs de dedicated to encouraging young musicians, increasing musical knowledge, and advancing American music and its cooperating organizations join forces annually in May to direct attention to the dynamic influence of music in everyday living. Now, therefore, the mayor of the city, uh, Arkansas City, Kansas, does hereby proclaim May 7th through 14th 2023 as National Music Week in Arkansas City and ask that all citizens of this community observe and take part in activities recognizing the importance of music, musicians, and musical organizations to the culture life, cultural life of our city, state, nation, and world in recognizing this year's theme, music, is a worldwide adventure. Great job, sir. You can remember that. On behalf of Mayor Spielman and the governing body of the city of Arkansas City, I'm going to greet you with this uh, certificate of appreciation for your assistance in reading the proclamation of National Music Week. Thank you. You've done an excellent job. Thank you. Emma? Come on up, there she comes. Now she got her back there. Whereas in 1993, the American Nurses Association declared May 6th to the 12th as the National Week to celebrate and elevate the nursing profession. Each year, the celebration ends on May 12th, which was Florence Nightingale's birthday. And whereas National Nurses Week is a time for everyone, individuals, employers, other healthcare professionals, community leaders, and nurses to recognize the vast contributions and positive impact of America's over 4 million registered nurses for their service, dedication, and daily sacrifices in caring for others and improving the health of patients. And whereas National Hospital Week is May 7th through the 13th of 2023, and whereas National Hospital Week celebrates in the hospitals, health systems, and men and women who support the health and well-being of communities through dedication and care from the heart, and whereas celebrating National Hospital Week provides an opportunity to thank all the dedicated individuals, physicians, nurses, therapists, engineers, food service workers, volunteers, administrators, and more for contributions. And whereas the hardworking people who staff our nation's hospitals, including the registered nurses and other personnel at SEK Health, deserve universal regard and appreciation 
for keeping our community healthy and safe. Now, therefore, the mayor of the city of Arkansas City, Kansas, does hereby proclaim May 6th through 12th of 2023 as National Nurses Week, and May 7th through the 13th of 2023 as National Hospital Week in Arkansas City, and urge residents to express their appreciation for the people, facilities, and technologies that make trustworthy, reliable health care possible in our community, and recognize this year's National Nurses Week theme. You make a difference in National Hospital Week theme, We Are Healthcare. Thank you, good job. Thank you so much. And appreciation from the Thank you. Thank you. All of our young people tonight were from Brandon Fieldhouse. We appreciate them coming in and participating in our city government. Recognition of visitors and staff. So introduce and swear in new police officer Cody Hutchison. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. So I have the honor of swearing in a new police officer today. Uh, officer Cody Hutchison began his employment with the Ark City Police Department on April 12th uh, of this year. Cody has been a lifelong resident of Arkansas City, attending Arkansas City Schools, graduating high school in 2017. Cody graduated with an associate's degree in criminal justice at Cowley College in 2019. Cody has worked as a lifeguard and participated in Boy Scouts for most of his life. He has most recently worked at Orsland in Arkansas City. During the interview process, Cody informed us that he wants to serve in the community he grew up in. He also informed us that his great grandfather was one of the very first motorcycle police officers here in Arkansas City. So Cody has a generational connection to this community and the department. We want to welcome Cody to the ACPD family, and at this time, we would ask the city clerk to administer the oath of honor. Okay. Can you raise your right hand and please repeat after me? On my honor. On my honor. I will never betray my badge. I will never betray my badge. My integrity. My integrity. My character. My character. Or the public trust. Or the public trust. I will always have the courage. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others. To hold myself and others accountable for our actions. Accountable for our actions. I will always uphold. I will always uphold the Constitution. Of the, sorry, the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the state of Kansas. And the state of Kansas. My community. My community. And the agency I serve. And the agency I serve. Thanks. Welcome. So proud of you, Cody. Great job. Thank you. Glad to have you. And you want to welcome on board. He's your friend. Okay. I've never met him. Okay. okay. Congratulations. Serve well. Where do we go? I appreciate that. So uh, I also have the honor of uh, talking about recent promotions that we've had at the Ark City Police Department. And I'll uh, address Commissioner Jennings as well. The police department recently promoted four officers in March and April of this year. Uh, Lieutenant Corey Combs was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Lieutenant Combs began his career with the department in 2015. He has served in the capacity of patrol officer and had a very successful stint in investigations as a detective. <clears throat> lieutenant Combs brings his knowledge and investigative skill into the lieutenant position to help guide and mentor the officers on his patrol shift. He is currently assigned to day shift patrol. 
Three officers were recently promoted to sergeant in March of this year. Sergeant Kelsey Hornick began her career with the Ark City Police Department in 2016 by working on patrol and then made the move to work in, in investigations. She left the department briefly in 2021, but returned to her role as a detective. She is currently assigned as the sergeant detective at the department. She has built a reputation as a very strong investigator and can be counted on to respond during critical incidents and for large scale investigations. Sergeant Corey Tuxhorn began her career with the department as an officer in 2016. However, prior to that, she served as an emergency communications officer for several years. Uh, most recently, Sergeant Tuxhorn has served as the crisis intervention officer, working side by side with a community co-responder uh, from Four County Mental Health. She's also the handler for the department's emotional support dog, SAP. Corey is known for helping others at every turn. Sergeant Tuxhorn is currently assigned to day shift patrol. Sergeant Mike Esquerdo began his career with the department in 2019. Sergeant Esquerdo emerged as a great candidate to become a school resource officer. Uh, this school year, Sergeant Esquerdo has filled the role as SRO at the middle school and has done a fine job. I hear nothing but positive feedback about his ability to build trust and rapport with students and staff. Sergeant Esquerdo was recently awarded the State VFW Officer of the Year Award, which has only been awarded one, one other time, and that was with uh, Sergeant Kelsey Hornick. Each of these promotions follow a theme. These officers have developed skills that have propelled their careers forward, whether that is investigating major crime cases or reaching out to those in mental health crisis or providing mentorship and guidance to the youth in our community. It is clear that the future of the Arkansas City Police Department is in wonderful hands. At this time, I would like to congratulate each of these uh, officers on their promotion. Mike you guys went the other way. <laughs> Good job. It worked out. Right. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Oh, excuse me. We're over here. Congrats. Okay. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> you didn't stand nearly as tall when you started. What? <laughs> It is toasty in here. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least. Here all you do. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're the one who counter counterfeiter at our wall. Yes, I did. A lot of help from everyone. Yeah. Thank you. During our call, we had some counterfeit money. Sergeant Hornet came, interviewed in uh, you know, about, I don't know, 10, 12 hours later, they had him. That's amazing. That's really, yeah, that was a good deal. Back up with the world. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you, Chief. That was awesome. And there goes the roof. Yeah. Yeah. There goes the roof. <laughs> I really thought all those people were here. I make a motion we approve it. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda as uh, written. Second. Approved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Close nay. Motion carried. Do business. Okay, City Manager Department. An ordinance authorizing the vacating of Taylor Avenue adjoining Lot 1 of Block 15 and Lot 14 of Block 4, Sleep Edition, Arkansas City, Kelly County, Kansas. That title wasn't as bad as we had in the past. Um, 
Melody Vaden has filed a request to vacate a portion of Taylor Avenue in Sleep Edition. And it's just a small half block basically from from G Street to the alley to the east side of the alley. Um, she was wanting to do this to expand the yard space. Uh, she's been maintaining this property for a while. The street is largely not the street. <laughs> There's some gravel there and that's about it. It's not not really something the city has been maintaining. Uh, all the adjacent property owners were notified of this and we have a technical advisory committee that, that reviewed it and there's no utilities in this particular area and so they didn't have any concerns about granting this property to the curb. Uh, the way it typically works um, is half of the property would go to the south and half of the property goes to the north. Uh, the Planning Commission held a public hearing and voted back on April 11th to recommend approval. You say all surrounding people have been notified. Yeah, everybody within 200 feet received a letter. Did anyone show up at, at this meeting? I think we had one. <laughs> Those neighbors that was there. But everybody agreed on it? Yeah. Good. Yeah, and I talked to a couple of people. Okay. That being said, I make a motion. We authorize the vacancy of the Taylor Avenue adjoining lot one of the lot five and lot 15 and of lot four, sleep edition of Arkansas City, Kansas. I think you meant lot one and block 15, right? Yeah. And block 15 and lot 14, yeah. I'll approve, I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? And then we'll proceed to vote. All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I missed that. Sorry. Commissioner Ginger? Uh, yes. Commissioner Denny? Uh, yes. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Mayor Stillman? Yes. Okay. Next items under the fire department. And it's a resolution authorizing the city of Arkansas City to purchase four 16-foot industrial fans from Hunter Fan Company for an amount not to exceed $19,984. Sir, yes. would you please state your name so the people who don't know you don't know you? Patrick Ramirez, Assistant Chief, Parks and Fire Department. Um, as you said, uh, we want to install four 16-foot uh, ceiling fans uh, to help evacuate the diesel exhaust and fumes out of the building to reduce the heat in the building to provide a safer and more comfortable working environment for our employees. So four of you just going to center them all the way down through the middle of it, space them out, or how you there do that? There may have to be a bit of an offset because okay. one of the uh, DEPs, the largest truck, is run right down the middle, so there okay. may be some offset. Okay. And uh, will they be putting them in, or will the city be putting them in, the fans? No, the city. Okay. Is this a budgeted item? Uh, the majority of it's going to be paid for by a grant that... Um, Park City EMS fire was given uh, stem from some COVID funds to provide for the EMS department. Um, so I believe all but about 2,000 of it comes from the grant and the rest of it made up from budget. Okay. So it's an EMS grant? Yes. Okay. It was the American Provider Grant that we received last year. The money needs to be spent by June, and we really need these fans. Last year, because of the heat in the building, we've right. tried. So some of our equipment um, had to be replaced because it got too hot, and we we all know the exhaust down there. And we are a combined department, so um, it meets the criteria for the grant. So. How much was that grant total? Seventeen thousand. You have that right okay. there. Okay. Yeah. So you'll, 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 you'll spend it all. Okay. Yeah. It's seventy thousand five hundred. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank I you. I have a whole lot else. 
discussion was, I'd like to make a motion we authorize the City of Art, Kansas City to purchase four 16-foot industrial fans from Hunter Fan Company for an amount not to exceed $19,984. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Curious, was the grant application done in-house? Yes, sir. Okay, well then I think uh, I would request that uh, in uh, addition to the motion as made that you would uh, also include uh, uh, expression of appreciation from the governing body for the efforts to secure the grant. I would have gladly yes. add that to the motion. Thank I'll second that. Yes. Right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Item number two is a resolution authorizing the City of Arc City to purchase two Zoll X Series Advanced Cardiac Monitor Defibrillators from Zoll Medical Corporation of Chisholm Ford. MA for Massachusetts <laughs> for an amount not to exceed $82,660.75. Very Wheatley, Fire EMS. Thank you. So we um, we currently use soul monitors and they've used those for since I've been there and I'm sure before my time. Um, the average life expectancy of those monitors are six to eight years. We have typically been getting eight years out of them. As of December of last year, we're no longer able to do software upgrades on the current monitors we have because they've exceeded their life expectancy. One of the monitors that we want to replace it was purchased in 2014. The other one was purchased in 2015. We did budget for that last year. So you have how many cardiac monitors? We have four. So two we're requesting to replace two this year and two next year. Yeah, it's hard to keep the cost down as much as we can for the city. And that's a budget item out of the fire department. Yes, sir. We budgeted for that last year for this year. Yeah. What do you get with the worry-free service plan beyond worry-free? <laughs> They do our PMs every year, and most all of the work that we have done on them is covered under warranty. I think there's a warranty included in that cost, and then we have a warranty that we pay every year. We won't have to pay a warranty on these next year because it's already covered. Is this the company that when you are able to save a life that they... Yes. Okay, yes. they send you... A They're the ones of... that... Zola Medical is the one that gives the clinical save awards for when we have patients who have suffered a cardiac respiratory arrest and survive and get to go home. I have a wording. I have a wording. I'd like to make a motion that we authorize the City of Art, Kansas City to purchase two Zoll X-Series Advanced Cardiac Monitor Defibrillators from Zoll Medical Corporation of Kelmsford, Massachusetts for an amount not to exceed $82,660.75. Second. Then moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I've got one on the... the uh, how soon can we get them once we do this? If I purchase them, usually within six weeks. Okay. And what do we do with the old ones? They're just worthless? We trade them in. Okay. We trade them in, and then I usually refurbish them for um, uh, educational institutions or purchase okay. them. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Items for discussion by city commissioners. Uh, we talked about uh, Ken's here. We talked about the signs, you know, on, on that first street. And so, are you going to give with Tony then? Uh, yeah, I, I sent an email to Chief Burr and Tony and asked them to work together on a location okay. and get that done. So. Okay. Well, and I think they had responded that they got the email and aren't getting it done yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How many? Uh, how many? Uh, Sign-ups that we had on this side-by-side -side and all that stuff. You have five today, Chief? That, yeah. Uh, 
We have five. So <laughs> I saw one driving by the office this afternoon. I had a good base though. So the license tags, everything there, they just sign up, pay, and get their tag, and yes, sir. And then you expect you inspect their the vehicle. Right. So the the process we've uh, identified so far that I, I think is going to be uh, okay moving forward is that uh, the forms are filled out um, and returned to the city clerk's office. She then forwards that to me. I reach out to the individual, um, schedule the inspection, and if the vehicle matches what we need as far as the inspection, um, they're cleared to come in and pay their $25. So they don't pay up front. Um, I make sure that, that the vehicle is going to meet inspection. But they can't drive until you inspect them, right? Right. Okay. And uh, at the time that they pay, um, at that time they get their uh, their little permit, uh, so the yellow permit with the number on it. And where does that go on their on their inside or outside? Is outside. Okay. Um, on the on the back okay. of the vehicle, so that way officers can see them. Okay. Thanks. Well, also. The other day we didn't uh, do any discussion on these having a second court date. I would like to see that we get that put on the agenda so we get some discussion yeah, on it. I, I was going to update you guys on that tonight. So okay. what what we've worked on is uh, the June 2nd work session. Um, if we can start at 11 that day and at 11 we can talk about the court um, dates and then we'll move into the budget stuff after that. So it's on June 11th, uh, June 2nd work at 11. June 2nd. Yeah. Thank you, Penny. Again. Second, what day is that on? Friday. 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 Thanks. Anything else from Commission? Yeah. Uh, okay. I think I got it all here. Yeah. We got the supportive letter for the uh, air uh, initiative. Okay. Yes. Group. Yep. You, that letter that needs to be. Yes, it's splitting around. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a letter somewhere. No pun intended. So to support the air proposal. Yeah, what, what that is about is, I don't know if you're all aware of it, but uh, so uh, Wichita Eisenhower Airport is uh, working on a grant for air service to, from Wichita to DC. And uh, so it would expand the um, uh, uh, direct routes from there. So they're, they're looking for support from the region and to reap. And so this would be a great way to support the region. And uh, hopefully get some extra uh, extra air routes out of our local airport. More reasonable safety. So. Anything else? Okay, we have comments from the audience. I do not have anyone signed. Did somebody not sign up? No one signed up. Was I supposed to sign up? Oh, maybe, yes. I didn't know you signed up. Would you, Mickey would like to speak if we can let him speak, please. <laughs> yes. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. <laughs> For those that don't know me, some know me as Mr. Mickey. And uh, my question has to do with S-C-H-M-I-T-H, for those that don't know the spelling. 426. North C Street. Thank you. Our Kansas City, Kansas. And my question has to do with an interest, Northwest Community Center. I don't know if this is the appropriate form, but I'm curious to know what goes on there for kids and in the future, what more could go on there for children? And I would be happy to be part of that process as I've been involved with a lot of youth programming in my 43 year professional career. Well, before COVID, we used to have that Thursday night gathering up there. Uh, I was told that that still happens. Has it started? I don't know. Okay. Well, have you talked to the board? Uh, I have. I know very little about the Northwest Community okay. Center, but I have talked to Cindy and uh, briefly. And what'd she say? They're working on it. Okay. When the hours are, at least on the board, are on the outside, 8 to 4.30. When I was a kid, we had awesome recreation programming for children. Drop in, sure. free. I'm not saying everything needs to be free, but 
I'm pretty sure, and I've lived here for 23 years, and I probably ride more bikes than most people around town. <laughs> and I don't see a lot going on there. But I really think that there's a need for that area. The building is there, right? We pay for the building. So is there a process that I could be included in helping create something? I'm not saying the summer. Can I ask that you said you visited with uh, the director? Yes. Cindy Bennett, uh, uh, did she make reference to the use of things in the game room area? I mean, there's stuff there. She claimed that people do come there periodically, but well, it's not a, I don't know. I don't think it's been a function program since since COVID. No, I understand, but I'm not talking I know. about COVID. I know, I know, but it needs to get going. Because we are COVID, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to get going again. Yeah. Gary Hale, I think, is the chairman of that board. Uh, probably need to contact. Are you him. recommending that that's how I go about this, or well, is that. there some other option? Well, I'd be happy if you'd get with me, and then we can kind of work through the channels. And because, um, yeah, I, I, I probably don't disagree with what you're saying up here. So, so if you want to give me a call, yep. It'll be next week uh, when uh, my substitute gig ends in about a week and a half. I don't have a job. Not that I want to get paid to do this, but I would gladly help push this forward. Well, I know our Optimus Club, we do a lot of cooking, have been in the past sure. for that thing, you know, hot dogs and, and stuff like that. And we need to get that thing going. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if anybody here has ever run before an after school childcare, but I've been involved in it many times. I've run a summer camp. Uh, there are great opportunities that could happen in that building. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they've they've had. It looks like we have a resource that we haven't been using. Yeah, that's right. They've had in the past. Again, I, I'm not speaking in the framework of COVID. I'm just saying that functionally, the uh, amenities inside the building. Uh, they've had uh, access to uh, computers hooked up to the internet. With monitor with adult monitoring for appropriate use. Well, I know that Fort they, County does go there periodically. They have with uh, children as well. Well, they, they do that. Uh, USD 470 takes some students over there for activities during the day. Uh, that game room area is typically available for young people who come. It's kind of been used under the banner of young people who come home from school about 3.30 and their the term latchkey then. parents aren't home from work yet and so but it they, closes at 4.30 uh, yeah and so I mean that's an, another hour of coverage that that's that is there so kids are usually home by 3.30 from school Something's so better than nothing. Yeah. so something but, is better than nothing but I'm saying there so there have been they have to the basketball court in there that's kind of an open activity and lots of games and interaction and it, so it's kind of been a it has been functionally a yeah for latchkey kids just a place they can go have some adult supervision and uh and uh, be constructively engaged but, uh, and I, I, up again. How's that? yeah well that's fine that's wonderful we know we need to have people like yourself to help Cindy up there, you know, to have somebody else because she can't do a hard time of her to do it all, you know. That's the reason why Gary, they try to get people to come in to help her out when they're having activities and stuff like that, you know, to show support and stuff. So uh, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought your, came up here and talked, you know, about this thing because uh, it needs to be done. So. And obviously you've had some background, so. Yeah. Yeah. Your resource we need to use. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. City manager. I'll make it quick because I know the farmers market is closing soon. So, um, <laughs> I, I I put a legislative update in front of you that uh, that was from the REAP organization. A um, couple things we might keep in mind as the session's over, and um, uh, look, we probably ought to keep an eye on like local sales tax next year uh, with the governor vetoing the tax bill. Um, you know, the legislator will probably come back with another tax bill next year. To, and so, um, 
we need to watch that local sales tax thing because they may get snuck in again. The other thing that uh, we're kind of waiting to see what uh, the governor does with her veto powers is on Senate Bill 8, um, there is a there is a, a piece in there that um, it's about local go or government competing with private business. Um, it has the potential of, um, I mean, really designed with Genesis Health Clubs in mind and rec commissions, but it, I think it spills into a lot of other things like maybe restaurants, things like that, because we have a senior citizen center that serves meals. And so what it, what it basically boils down to is a private business says government's competing against them. There's a, you know, they don't have to pay taxes and stuff. So there's some things there that uh, we'll have to see what the governor does with that piece. So but other than that, just kind of a recap of what happened legislatively. Um, speaking of budget, um, I just want to remind you of our budget retreat on May 12th. And I put a, a calendar uh, for the day um, for you guys to kind of see what's what's happening. We'll have Beth Warren here at 11 to go over our rate reviews. Um, and then the auditor will be here at noon. Uh, we'll have lunch and then we'll kind of start stepping down. We'll kind of kick off lunch with Matt. Matt will keep you guys awake. And uh, <laughs> and then we'll go through the through the folks and then end with Chief Burr. So um, let's see, so you know what's going on there. And like we mentioned before uh, earlier, the at the June second work session will be some more budget. It'll be the outside agencies. But if you guys can come in at eleven, and we'll remind you about that. We can talk about the uh, municipal court um, issues, um, the enterprise uh, fleet management that we've been working on. So we just had our first round of the new vehicles flipping over. Um, you know, we, we did really well um, selling the used vehicles last year and purchasing them, you know, bringing in the new ones. So um, with the new ones selling, we actually come out ahead of what we spent last year on vehicles. So it, it's so far it's working and, um, you know, it's a thousand dollar gain over, was it three, four vehicles, three vehicles, four vehicles. Three, four vehicles. But we also got to add in, so that, uh, we save money on fuel um, and maintenance on those vehicles as well. So that's not a number that we, could, we haven't put numbers to yet. But um, so so far it's 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 working well. We got pickups getting ready to turn over next. So I I think we'll probably see better numbers on pickups than we do on the cars. But we'll we'll see. Um, they uh, poured concrete on the alley uh, today on the north side. Um, probably won't pour tomorrow in the south. Probably the next day. I, uh, but it should be poured by the end of this week. And the bridge demo on 15th Street should get started this week. The uh, truck stop sewer um, design um, is waiting on KDOT's approval, and it's at 50% complete, so that's moving. And then uh, the mass and mill and overlay end of May again. So that's kind of what's going on. What about our hike and bike trail? So the plans have been resubmitted again. Um, I just talked to Chris uh, this, today about that, and um, they they have acknowledged receiving in this time, so we're just kind of waiting now for their review of the plan. So, well, we've got the money just sitting in the account, right? Yeah, it keep it, we just keep having a hold up with KDOT saying the plans aren't getting <laughs> properly for review, and so then they. So well, whose fault is that? I I don't know. Um, Technology gremlins, <laughs> probably. Yeah, it's happened several times. Okay. Um, I, I don't know who, who to point a finger at on it, but it's, it keeps delaying it. So that's all I've got. Anything else tonight? Anything from the audience? Yes. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second. Moved and second we adjourn. All in favor? Oh, aye. Whoops. Uh oh. No. Too late. Everyone's already up. Gotta speak up.